Okay, hello everybody. Um, my name's Stephen Farrell. Um, I'm going to be leading this webinar. I'm going to talk for about 30 minutes or so. Um, and what I'm going to be doing is taking you through a couple of data sets which I and some colleagues collated. Um, and so just explaining a little bit about the, um, the kind of thinking behind that project which led to the creation of these data sets and telling you a bit about what you can expect to get in them. Uh, if you download them from the UK Data Archive, where they're, they're lodged as SN7875, um, and some of the analyses that you might wish to um, do with them. Okay, so I'm going to give you, as I said a moment ago, an introduction to the wider project, and I'm going to explain a little bit um, about the original data sources. Then I'm going to explain um, in more depth the data sets that we've constructed from those original data sets, and... Um, then what I'm going to do is spend a little bit of time talking through some of the analyses which one could undertake using those data sets and then think a little bit about some of the extensions that one could make to those data sets and then explain how um, one can get hold of and use those, um, those data sets that we've lost at the um, data archive. So these two data sets were um, produced using data from the British Crime Survey, which is now called the Crime Survey for England and Wales, and the British Social Attitude Survey. And we put them together, really, as a way of allowing us to assess the impact of what one might think of as being Thatcherite social and economic policies on crime um, in the period after she's left office. So, the research project, which was conducted with um, social policy analysts and um, political scientists, as well as myself, really drew upon ideas from political science um, in an attempt to bring kind of fresh thinking into um, criminological debates on um, the relationship between social and economic change and um, uh, social policies and, um, and crime. Now, we did all of that because our earlier analyses had really relied on data that was collected at the national level, so things like GDP, um, Gini coefficient, um, recorded crime trends. And that was all well and good, um, but what we wanted to do was to explore the way in which the shifts that took place uh, in the 1980s and 1990s and, and the period since were also kind of related to attitudinal shifts, so the way in which social attitudes were either shaped by or shaped thinking about um, social and economic policies, but we also wanted to explore subgroup experiences and in, in so doing um, incorporate self-reported um, data. So the first step was to review all of the data sets that we could easily get hold of and that was a very short project funded by the Economic and Social Research Council over the summer of 2008. And then we set about thinking about the best ways of interrogating those data sets so that we could get, um, get to the answers that we, um, that, 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 that we were looking for. Then after we'd uh, reviewed the data sets that were there and kind of gone away and written up some sort of basic analyses using national level data, we then got another award from the Economic and Social Research Council and that enabled us to spend a couple of years bringing together, collating all of the data um, that, that we had good time series runs on from the British Crime Survey and the British Social Attitude Survey. And then that was um, lodged, as I said earlier, at the UK Data Archive as study number 7875. So the data preparation for the collation of, um, of these data sets took around about 18 months. And that was partly because we needed to go through and check that variable names were consistent, and of course they weren't, that the values were consistent, and of course sometimes they changed from being a one to four scale to a four to one scale, as it were, and to check question wordings, consistency in those over time, and just anything else that might um, get in the way of doing um, analyses over time comparing trends in those data sets. Now, of course, there were changes in the survey designs over time as, as well. That's particularly true of the British Crime Survey, uh, less so, of course, for British social attitudes, but there were changes in the survey designs, and that's one of the things that you need to bear in mind when you're analysing um, 
the data that we've collated on from the British Crime Survey, Stroke Crime Survey for England and Wales. This is, in effect, given that it goes back to the early 1980s in the case of both of those surveys, historical data. It's data that um, it, what was collected contemporaneously, but which we are kind of analysing or have been analysing in order to tell us something about the past and about how we got from the past to, um, to, to, to where we are um, today. And in that sense, it has all of the problems that one normally associates with historical data, missing values which can't be um, uncovered, uh, recovered, um, for example. So as I've already indicated, the data sources which um, we relied on were the British Crime Survey, which started in 1982, now known, of course, as the, for, as the Crime Survey for England and Wales, and the British Social Attitudes Survey, which started in 1983. If you download the data sets from the um, UK Data Archive, what you'll find is, as well as those two data sets, you'll find aggregate data sets from a range of other um, official sources. And these were just variables that we were interested in, in our attempts to model fluctuations in um, criminal justice system actions, as it were, and um, crime trends and the relationship um, between those and, uh, and other factors. So th there's a whole raft of different data sources there which might throw some light on, um, on crime. What you won't find, uh, I'm afraid, because there just simply wasn't time to collate all of that data, were any of the BCS booster samples um, which have been collected. So for some considerable time, the British Crime, crime Survey uh, had booster samples of, for example, ethnic minorities or additional samples of um, people aged 10, uh, sorry, 12 to 15, who normally fall outside of the typical survey um, age range. Uh, we weren't able to um, collate any of those simply because they weren't of sufficient, um, sufficiently, sufficient interest to ourselves. And so therefore, given that we had limited resources, we focused really just on the, um, the main surveys. So the data sets include um, a whole range of variables. Obviously, the British Crime Survey ones are, are principally focused on things which one would be uh, interested in if one was explaining crime. So things like the fear of crime, victimization, perceptions of antisocial behavior in the local area, perceptions of the effectiveness of the criminal justice system, and so on and so forth. There are some additional interviewer assessments, for example, um, whether the areas are uh, in kind of a good state of repair or whether there are houses that are uh, in an in a uncared for state, those sorts of things. Um, but the, uh, the, the bulk of the, the British Crime Survey data obviously comes from the respondents themselves. When one turns to the British Social Attitude Survey, there is, as one might well imagine, a whole series of um, survey questions which really attempts to measure people's attitudes on a number of different um, uh, topics. Uh, as well as that, there is uh, data on voting, political engagement, trust, newspaper readership, those sorts of things. And both of those data sets include all of the usual kind of socio-demographics, age, housing, tenure, gender, region the respondent was living in at the time of the interview, and all those sorts of things. We've also included all of the original weighting variables so that if people need to weight the data for various things, then, then they have that to, um, to hand. And as I said earlier, there's a whole kind of range of um, other official data on recorded crime, etc. So our philosophy from the very beginning is, of course, that this data isn't ours. I mean, <laughs> and it, it, it isn't ours in, in any sense, really. We downloaded all of this data from the data archive ourselves as individual, that is to say, annual um, files of the, for the survey. And what we've done is just collated runs of questions that um, are repeatedly asked. So it isn't ours. It's, it was never our intention just to um, keep this, this fantastic resource just to ourselves. So um, that's why it's been lodged with the data archive in the hope that other people will um, benefit from it as much as uh, we have. So the data is there to be used um, for any analyses which you, you may wish to perform. Obviously, uh, you need to bear in mind all of the health warnings, which I'm going to touch on in a minute. Um, 
Uh, but other than that, the data is there for people to use any any way they, they wish. If you or uh, any of your friends and colleagues want to use the data, so I would encourage you to download it direct from the UK Data Archive rather than sharing it amongst yourselves, because this means that the UK Data Archive can get much more precise data um, on who's using it and what they're using it for, etc., which of course is um, invaluable for the Data Archive themselves. So the health warnings. So um, I'm afraid to say that we don't have the resources to support um, users of the collated um, data sets after the end of the um, research project. Um, the research grant that we were working on to collate these data sets ended about 18 months ago. We are still, most of us, working together on another project analyzing the birth cohort studies from 1958 and 1970, but I'm afraid to say we don't have time to um, to respond to queries about these particular data sets, unless you happen to spot something that you think we may have um, uh, done incorrectly. Um, so I'm afraid to say we can't respond to queries about the original data sets because we weren't the ones who designed them. Um, and another thing to bear in mind, of course, is that all data sets have um, limitations. They're, they're limited by uh, what the original investigators were interested in back in the um, early 1980s. And then, of course, in some respects, you're limited by what we were interested in. So we've mainly focused on the data relating to um, crime or that we think might tell us something about crime trends over time. Um, so in some respects, this is kind of filtered twice by other people's um, interests. The sampling, as I mentioned earlier, uh, for the British Social Attitudes is fairly straightforward. It's rather more complex for the British Crime Survey, and probably what you'll need to do is to read the uh, survey reports um, provided to the Home Office or the Office for National Statistics by the survey company for the years that you're particularly interested in, because the um, sampling varies from year to year for the um, British Crime Survey. Inevitably, there are some missing variables, um, that is to say, uh, variables that we wished people had thought to ask in the early 1980s and, and, and since, or um, variables which for some reason just don't get asked at a particular sweep. They're, they're very few and far between, but there are uh, examples such as that. What one also has to bear in mind is that the counts for victimization in the British Crime Survey have been capped, so there's a limit to the number of repeat victimizations that an individual could um, could report. How is the data structured? Well, what we did when we were merging together all of these um, different data runs, and it's important to say at this point that there's one file that contains the British Crime Survey data, and there's another separate file that contains the British Social Attitude Survey, so they're not being brought together um, into one file. But, what we tried to do was to keep um, the data at the individual level. So each row, if you want to think of it in an SPSS or Stata file um, sense, each row is um, an individual who has completed the survey at some point. And so looking at the, um, the table at the bottom of the screen, this is um, a screenshot from the Stata version of the BCS, and you can see the first variable on the left is the simply gives you the name of the sweep, um, the year that the data relates to, because of course for a crime survey it's about the previous year, the source file, uh, which is the name of the file that you get when you download the data straight from the UK um, Data Archive, and then a couple of um, items there from uh, the actual survey itself. The first question is about whether people feel safe walking around in the dark on their own, and the second question, which you can see slightly clipped at one side, is about whether people worry about um, being burgled. So all of that data um, comes uh, in that kind of format, and then um, has the demographic data appended towards the, the end of it, so that's, that is to say on the um, on the uh, right-hand side of the, of the screen as you're looking at it. We've had to um, collapse some variables together, and so what we've tried to do there is to provide um, 
different versions of the same variable. So if you look there, you'll see that there's two versions of tenure. Um, so um, the degree, whether it's rented or whether it's rented from um, a social landlord or a non-social landlord. When it comes to things like um, income, for example, we've had to do something slightly different here because we were looking at data that encompassed the best part of 30 years. Raw income wasn't in itself particularly um, useful because it was inflated so much during that period. So income has been recoded into um, a standardized variable for every individual, which puts them in the, um, the top or the middle or the bottom um, quartiles from the interquartile range within the year in which they were um, interviewed. The uh, data also includes a whole range of questions, and this, this is again another screenshot from the British Crime Survey on worry about crime, victimization, attitudes of punishment, and that's fairly, um, fairly straightforward to, to get your head around when you, uh, when you start to explore it. The data as on victimization includes both dichotomous, that is to say yes or no, they have been um, victimized, and also um, questions about the frequency with which they've been um, victimized. So if you look along the line there, uh, and in the middle of the screen you'll see car damage, which is whether the car's been damaged, and you'll see that's a binary, it has yes or no's below that. And then immediately to the right of that is N car damage, which is the number of times that individual's car has been damaged. And you can see for the first couple of people, it's just once. Um, and for the people towards the bottom of the screen, they've had their car damaged um, twice. We also produced summary measures of all sorts of victimization. So simply whether somebody had been a victim or not, the number of times they'd been a victim, whether they'd been a victim of a car crime or property crime, those sorts of things. So that, that data is appended um, for you there as well. Turning now to the British Social Attitudes Survey, that again is structured in, in very much the same way. So again, we've retained things at the individual level but with a code for the year that they were interviewed. Um, so it's very simple, therefore, with recoding to take kind of averages for a particular variable into um, a year and then to compare averages to our answers on, on, on a particular question um, year against year against year against year. So you can use this to set up, if you like, time series runs of kind of average attitudes about a particular topic. Unlike the British Crime Survey, which doesn't include any um, questions about social class, the British Social Attitudes includes a lot more measures of social class, um, although these do uh, vary over time. And of course, a lot more attitudinal questions. The, the, the British Crime Survey doesn't really explore wider social attitudes at all. You really do need to go to the British social, uh, the British Attitudes, sorry, Social Attitudes Survey to uh, get attitudinal data, even though some of that will relate to um, crime itself. So what kind of analyses are possible using this data set? So bearing in mind it's all being collated at the individual level, all of those things that you would typically associate with individual level analyses are possible from um, uh, things like linear or logistic regressions, negative binomial or Poisson regressions for things like victimization. Factor analyses are possible, so a path or structural equation model diagrams, and of course t-tests, cross-tabs, anything else that you would normally do um, at an individual level, test you would perform an individual level data, is, um, in, is, is possible using this data set because it's been retained at the um, individual level. What one, of course, can also do is to um, collate that data into uh, groups. And so here is data from the British Social Attitudes. And what we're doing is we're comparing the Registrar General's classification of social class. So if you look at the bottom of the graph, um, you see that the black line is the top three social classes and the dotted or dotted or uh, sorry, dotted or dashed lines, I'll get my words straight in a minute, the dotted or dashed lines are the lower three social classes. And then this is their average responses to a question on whether um, people who break the law should be given stiffer sentences. And you see that actually the two different groups of social classes kind of mirror 
each other over time. Their fluctuations are very similar to one another, but that they start at sort of different points. And, and, and this is referred to in the political science literature as um, parallel publics. Moving on from that level of um, analyses or that, that kind of style of analyses, what one can also do, of course, a rather more complex um, analysis. So we've been involved in uh, analyses or undertaken analyses rather looking at age period and cohort effects in terms of um, attitudes or in terms of worry about crime. There's also um, conditional formatting, which is quite fun. I'll come on and show you a bit about that in a moment. And then, of course, there are other things that you can do. Multi-level modeling is possible. Um, I suspect that there are probably too few regions um, to use because there's only 10 or so in most of these data sets. You may be able to use um, lower level output areas for some of the more recent British crime survey or crime survey of England and Wales data sets. But we, uh, we didn't append those markers to this data set because um, we were kind of looking at analyses back to the early 1980s and of course it wasn't available then. So you might be able to do multi-level modeling with years. I don't think you can do it with regions because there were probably just too few. The other thing that you can do, of course, is to um, explore what would normally be quite rare populations in um, any survey, so for example, um, male victims of domestic violence, which you may find very few in any one run, any one year survey of the British Crime Survey, what one might be able to do is to pool up or to aggregate those individuals across a number of different years and then use them to undertake more robust analysis, the, the, the robustness coming from the, the larger number of cases. So if there are rare populations that you're interested in, um, then this might be one way of unpacking or exploring those in um, a little more detail. So we've used data from the British Crime Survey to explore the degree to which um, uh, anxiety about crime is related to uh, popular discourses which were uh, floating around, as it were, or being um, espoused by politicians as at the point where one starts voting and found that that people's fears seem to be a product of the kind of discourses that were circulating as they as they sort of came of age politically. We've also used um, the same kind of analysis technique, age period and cohort analysis techniques, uh, to explore the extent to which um, uh, gen generations hold attitudes which are more in keeping with kind of Thatcherism as it were, and that's been published in a paper in the British Journal of Political Science. Um, and the lead author there is a colleague of ours, um, Maria Grasso. I want to come on now and talk to talk about um, conditional formatting. So this is a way of getting um, a good kind of glance at different trends in the data set, which you may wish to kind of start to um, unpack and explore a, a bit more kind of uh, systematically using um, uh, more widely recognized statistical techniques. So this is a plot of um, the answers to a question from the British Social Attitudes about whether the gap between what rich people and what poor people have is um, too large. So um, higher values, that is to say people agreeing with that, are the, um, the cells in red. And the way to read this is that the columns are the years and the rows are individuals of that age in that year. So if you like, this is a synthetic cohort analysis. So if you look at the first cell in the top left-hand corner, you've got people who are 18 in 1983. And then if you want to follow that cohort forward, well, they're 19 in 84, 20 in 1985, and so on and so forth um, along. So a, a cohort, if you like, um, should appear as a, a sort of a diagonal running from top left to bottom right. Now what you can see here is that the, we, as a country we felt fairly neutral about the gap between rich and poor people from really the start of the run, 1983, until early 1991. Then in 1993 there seems to be something of a, a sort of a change in that attitude right across all of the different generations and that becomes kind of particularly pronounced amongst those people that are sort of 
in the early 40s in um, the mid 1990s, 95, 97, those, those sorts of things. What one then sees in 1998 is a sort of dropping away of that concern. As I suspect, people think that, well, now Labour we're in, uh, we're going to see them do something about economic inequality. But then as it becomes clear that Labour are less interested in tackling economic inequality than people had initially suspected, one sees a kind of a band running from the, um, the middle of the screen um, down towards the bottom right-hand corner. It's a, it's, a, it's a faint band, but it's, it's discernible. Sometimes it helps if you make your eyes go slightly out of focus when you're looking at these things. And you see a kind of um, a, a warming up, that is to say, an increasing number of cells that are becoming red in the bottom right-hand um, corner. What's interesting is that um, above that, for those, um, those, those people who are uh, around about 18 in 1998 and, and the years since, is we go back to that kind of yellow color where people are much less concerned um, about levels of economic inequality. So conditional formatting is a good way of both um, getting a handle on some of the general trends in the data set, but also it's quite a nice visual technique for showing um, to people the sorts of trends that, that might be hidden away in the data. Other analyses that are possible are those things that kind of aggregate up data. So as I mentioned earlier, you could aggregate up attitudes into um, years for groups of people or um, whole survey sweeps, and then use that to undertake time series models modeling. One could also undertake that using structured equation models. We've undertaken dynamic factor analyses um, in a paper that was published um, in Governance, and the lead author for that was um, Will Jennings. And of course, there's also things like latent growth um, modeling. Now, the data that we have archived runs from 1982 for the British Crime Survey, or 1983 for the British Social Attitudes Survey, through until 2012. And there are, of course, a number of possible extensions that other individuals may wish to make um, to these data sets. So one could extend the um, run of the years by a appending some of the variables from um, data collection sweeps after 2012 to the data that we've collected. There's been, of course, another um, four or five years runs of data at least um, av made available. So that could be um, appended. We could also, uh, or one could also include variables which we didn't collect. Um, there were some attitudes in the British social attitudes, for example, which we didn't collect, which one could go back and um, uh, collate and put into the uh, data set that, that we've produced. Or, of course, one could add other aggregate level variables from other um, data sets or from other data sources. So, for example, um, if you're interested in woundings or, or near fatal um, uh, criminal incidents, then one might be able to get access to NHS data from A&E wards and, um, and put that in um, by year or, or, or something like that. So there's all sorts of other things that one could do with the um, data set in terms of adding in variables that we didn't collect or, or adding in additional years that we weren't able to collect because um, the data wasn't yet available. Then, of course, what one can also do is to create new variables from the um, from what's already in the data set. So for example, you might be interested in, here I've kind of picked one at random, single people without a car. Do they experience different types of victimization or do they have different kind of attitudes um, compared to um, other people that have cars or other people that are single? So you can create new variables from what's in there and, um, and, and then kind of use those to explore the things that you're particularly interested in. If one wanted to, one could uh, go back and do the th one of the things that we didn't do, which was to collect the ethnic minority booster samples from the, um, from the British Crime Survey data run. There are some crime surveys um, in Scotland, because the first British Crime Survey um, was properly a British Crime Survey and that it included data from Scotland. But the crime surveys in Scotland have been few and far between in the years since, so that, that might be... Um, might be a challenge, but certainly one, one, one could do it. And of course, one could do similar things with um, other data sets. We've just um, explored the British Social Attitudes and the British Crime Survey, but of course, there's all sorts of data sets like the um, Labour Force Survey or the General Household Survey 
that one could do similar things with um, in a UK context, or one could do similar things with in um, in other countries using the general social survey um, in uh, America, for example. So what are the potential uses? Well, <laughs> one of the obvious ones, of course, is data analysis. Um, and this is, we think, um, a set of set of data that could be used really at kind of every level um, it could it it's allows sufficiently sophisticated analyses that one could use it at um, postgrad level either for PhD theses or for master's theses um, I've used some of the data for teaching purposes when I'm teaching people about um, designing survey questions um, at undergraduate level but of course there's lots of people working in QSTEP programs who may wish to use this um, themselves and then of course if you're in the business of training non-academics in um, statistical techniques um, then this data set should enable you to teach people um, lots of different techniques in data sets that are fairly easy for them to to get hold of and of course you have to bear in mind that some of these trends were picked up by the people who went on to design the European Social Survey. Of course, the European Social Survey was initially run by the late Roger Jowell, and of course it was Roger who played a very, very big part in the setting up of the British Social Attitudes Survey. So there, there are some questions that um, map straight from the British Social Attitudes onto the European Social Survey. Uh, and so there, there are some some trends that could be um, explored there. The thing that you have to bear in mind with, of course, with the European Social Survey is that, um, I think I'm right in saying this, there's now only um, 10 years worth of data, and so you won't be able to do quite um, the the kind of analyses that, that we've done, but certainly um, there's a lot more data in some respects because there's a lot more countries and a lot more um, respondents, uh, but there will be, um, of course, some countries that, aren't in uh, particular years or um, some questions that, that rotate with their rotating modules, but certainly the core questions for the European Social Survey could have this kind of collation done to them um, and then used in, in, in that sense. Okay, in terms of getting the data, we lodged the data in early 2016 with the UK Data Archive. And the, the study number is there on the screen for you. It's SN7875. Um, and that's um, free to download. You need to uh, register with the UK Data Archive if you haven't already. But uh, that only takes um, a few minutes. And then you can download it. It's available to download um, in Stata and in SPSS formats. And I think possibly SAS as well. And so it should fit um, into uh, whichever stats package you use. Of course, they're, they're, they've become much, much easier to, um, to translate across from one another. If you do use it um, and you want to cite the um, award, uh, the ESRC award that the data was based on, it's there for you on the screen. Um, similarly, uh, you may also wish to cite the very short paper. It's only 10 pages long, which those of us principally involved in the um, data collation uh, wrote and it's published in the British Journal of Criminology. That's um, because it's ESRC funded work, open access, so you can get that for free um, anywhere in the world by going to the British Journal of Criminology. And that gives some of the thinking behind the project and some of the thinking behind the data sets and again a little bit more sort of contextual information about um, the, the, the wider project. So if you do go as far as downloading the data set, what you get is, of course, the individual level data sets. And as I said a moment ago, you get Stata and SPSS versions. There's also um, an access spreadsheet for uh, which you can use as basically a kind of um, a code book. And what you also get is the original study numbers so that if you need to, you can go back and explore the original questionnaires. What you don't get are the questionnaires and the um, survey reports and the technical reports and all those sorts of things that um, the original data sets uh, would have had if you downloaded them individually. So if there's a particular set of um, uh, survey years that you're interested in, what you might want to do is to download those um, questionnaires so that you know exactly which order the questions were asked in, etc., etc., those, those sorts of things. Because, of course, as we all know, there may well be um, question order effects. In terms of the actual amount of data, the British Crime Survey 
well now Crime Saver of England and Wales, um, you get around about 600,000 respondents. We were fascinated when we um, did a very simple frequency on the age of the uh, respondent, sorry, the, the year of the respondent's birth and discovered that there was somebody in the British Crime Survey, must have been one of the very early sweeps, who was born at some point in the 19th century. So this is a British Crime Survey, in some respects, therefore, sort of spans um, parts of three centuries rather than uh, just the one, one or two that we normally associate it with. You get around about 200 variables um, from the, uh, in the British Crime Survey um, data set. Of course, uh, in some cases, not all of those respondents uh, provide data for all of those 200 variables. Um, so uh, there are some questions that weren't asked early on that become, uh, if you like, core parts of the British Crime Survey later on. And of course, there are some questions, follow-ups to victimization questions, for example, which um, not everybody gives answers to because not everybody was a victim. Now, the number of sweeps that you get between 1982 and 2012 is, I'm afraid to say, 20 rather than the 30 that it does add up to. Um, and that's because the British Crime Survey didn't run annually when it first started. It first ran in 1982, then again in 1984. There was a holiday, as it were, in 1986, and then it ran again in 1988 and then 1992. And subsequently, sometime after that, um, in the late 1990s, it, it then becomes a kind of an annual survey. But the the 30-year period is contained within 20 different um, sweeps of data. Of course, in the five years since then, there have been another five um, sweeps of the British Crime Survey. The British Social Attitudes um, is a bit of a tiddler when one compares it to the British Crime Survey. There are only uh, around about 90,000 um, respondents contained in the data sets that we've collated. And that comes to around about 120 variables when one includes all of the socio-demographics and information about whether people were in receipt of uh, benefits and so on. However, that, um, that data set encompasses 28 of um, those 30 or so years. The only years that are missing are 1988, and 1992, which are the years that the, um, the survey didn't run. In terms of the aggregate level data, which again may be useful for people um, undertaking time series analyses, there's a whole range of sort of socio-demographic data. There's data there on um, housing repossessions, number of children in care, divorce rates, economic inequality, all those sorts of things. Um, and so there's kind of quite a bit to um, play with. There's also some data from um, parliamentary questions and um, public and policy agendas um, too. If you're interested in the actual research project that we're undertaking, the web page for the project is there. Um, it's based in the School of Law at the University of Sheffield. And so if you follow that, that link, you'll eventually get to um, uh, a page devoted to the research project where you can download some of our journal articles and um, download various um, presentations, the PowerPoint slides and various presentations which we've made um, in the past. We run uh, an email newsletter which won't be clogging up your inboxes because we do it fairly infrequently. We do it when there's kind of major things to um, announce. If you'd like to join that um, email newsletter, just drop me an email on that um, email address and I'll add your name to it. We also Twitter, um, which is uh, actually quite good fun, uh, and our Twitter handle is there. And again, if uh, there were major announcements relating to the project or anything to do with um, British politics that we can link back to the 1980s or 1970s at some point, then we generally tweet um, about that, that there. Okay, so um, that's about it from me, other than to uh, thank you for listening and um, to uh, hope that you do take the time to download the, the data set. Between us lodging it in February 2016 and about a week or so ago when I last asked the data archive to check, um, there have been 46 downloads of the data set, which I think is um, actually a relatively high number for, um, for, for a data set, particularly one that's as complex as this, because it's, it's not necessarily for the faint-hearted. So there certainly seems to be 
some appetite for data sets like this um, and um, I hope that uh, you found this useful and that you um, you do indeed use the data set. If you do use the data set, um, be it for research or, or be it for um, teaching purposes, if you could drop us an email and just let us know, that would be um, absolutely fantastic. We're quite keen to find out how people have used it um, and so any feedback on that would be um, gratefully received. Thank you very much.